have a saying here in Ohio that March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. That rings true definitely for 2022. The beginning of March was snowy and cold and it makes you feel like spring is never coming. I spent a lot of time knitting and challenging myself with new projects and it's been a great month so far. It's only halfway over and it already feels like spring is on its way. Yesterday was a very warm day, it was sunny, the kids and I spent a lot of time outside, and I got a little bit of knitting done, but not like I had been in the previous days and weeks. I have one finished object to show today, and it's more like a half finished object. This is the daily sock that I was working on for my daughter, and it fits us both. I did find that because of the patterning along the top that I'm going to need to stretch it just a little bit with blocking, um, but it does fit us both, and I think that's probably how it is for most pattern socks, but I haven't made very many of them. But it did mention to go up a needle size, and generally we can use like a, a US 1.5 um, if we're very careful to measure how long to make the sock, but generally I've used a US 2, so I stuck with a US 2 for this sock, so I'm just going to have to block it a little bit more aggressively. Um, I did 64 stitches and I made it a shorty sock. Shorty sock. <laughs> so.
So that is my one finished object, if you want to count that as finished. So I did start the second sock. Oh, here it is. I didn't get very far. I just got um, the ribbing done here. So I don't even know if you can see it. but So I just have the ribbing done. And this is the Sedona colorway by Woolberry Fiber Company. Um, it was a mini that was sent with a sock set that I bought, I think last year. So I don't know if it's a colorway that she continues to do or not, but um, I liked the contrast with the minty color. This uh, main color of the sock is called Frieden, and it's by A Home Spun House. So my ribbing is done, and I just need to get started on the second one. I put it aside a little bit to work on some other things because I decided to begin my first sweater and I was trying to pick a couple things from my Make 9 that I wanted to accomplish over the course of this year and my daughter's birthday isn't until May so I think I have a good head start for her birthday socks but there are a couple other things that I would like to finish first. This is the three color cashmere cowl by Hohi Locatelli. And I showed you the yarns that I chose in the last um, video. But this is how it is looking so far. We have the cracked pepper, the snowshoe, and then this is the ochre or okra color um, from Hue Loco. And this was my first time doing eyelet. So I don't know if you can see those, but they were very fun to do um, with some yarn overs. This section here was not my favorite because it was just two rows, change color, two rows, and that's going to be a lot of ends to weave in. There may be a, an easier way to do that where you don't have to weave in ends. Maybe there's a way that you can carry the yarn but I don't know how to do it and I didn't take the time to look it up so I broke my yarn every time. And then this top section here is very fun with these little curl bumps. I'm not sure if you can see them but they are, they add some texture and I'm really liking how it is coming out. So. That is my cowl so far, and I'm really enjoying working on this. Since returning to Instagram, I've joined two cow or two cows, yes, so far. One is the Easy Peasy Scrappy Cow, um, and I'll link that below. 
but I really enjoyed making the last pair of scrappy socks that I did and this time I wanted to do something in more earthy neutral colors so I have this basket of minis that I chose the colors for and I started with a one by one rib and worked my way up. I'm doing a three by one rib pattern. So knit three, purl one pattern on the leg. So this is what I have so far. And this is just something that's nice and portable for me to take um, if I'm going to my parents' house on Sundays for Scrappy Sunday, or if I'm in the car waiting for the kids to finish with basketball, or if we go to the park or the playground, um, it's just something that's easy to take with me. So I just have this in this, those socks in this little bento bag that I found on Etsy, and I just carry that around with me. So that's one cow that I joined. Another one is the Drea, Drea Renee Knits uh, March through May cowl and this is where I decided to join so that I could begin my first attempt at a sweater and I did choose the weekender sweater. I know everybody and their sister has made a weekender so I am late to the party but that's good for me because that means I have a lot of people that I can utilize as resources when I have questions or need help. So the trouble started at the very beginning with the tubular cast on. And I just found that very confusing and fiddly. And so I skipped it and I just did a long tail cast on. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. The ribbing still looks fine. The cast on edge does not bother me. Um, I may attempt to make another one because the wool that I chose might be too scratchy for me. Um, this is Lion Brand Wool Ease and the colorway Oatmeal. And as a kid, I always had a sensitivity to wool. But as I've been knitting and working on wool socks and different merinos and superwash wools, I don't feel like it bothers me as much. Well, at least on my feet or, you know, the cowl for my neck, it doesn't seem to be an issue. So I'm not sure how I'm going to react to the sweater. So if it's itchy and if it bothers my skin, then I'm going to be giving this to my mom. So I will have a second attempt to see if I can conquer the tubular cast on, but I have gotten pretty far. I still have a ways to go. I'd say I'm halfway through the body right now. And I just have my little pine tree stitch marker on there. And I love on the inside how which will, will be the outside, how that little detailing is coming out. And I'm really happy with how things are going so far. So I know I haven't gotten to the difficult part yet where there's detailing on the shoulders and the neckline, but um, I think I'm going to be okay. So I'm just going to continue my way and reach out if I have any questions. So that is... I would say that's my main work in progress, what I've been working on most often. So I'm keeping my sweater in this project bag. And I made this a few years ago, maybe two years ago. Um, I was trying my hand at sewing and I was teaching myself how to do it. And I was enjoying it and it became an obsession. And so I was making many project bags. I did sell a handful of them, um, but I found, like with anything else for me, when I find a creative outlet that I enjoy and people come to me and say, oh, can I, 
can I pay you to make that? Or can I pay you to take our picture? Like when I was doing photography, can I pay you to make me a bag? I lose a little bit of joy because it then becomes a job. So let's see, I showed you the sock, I showed you the scrappy socks, the cowl, and the sweater. So those are the main four things that I'm working on. I decided to put my granny stripe blanket away for a while. Um, I had been working on it on Sundays for Scrappy Sunday. And I feel like with spring coming and the warmer weather coming, I'm just not really feeling on working on it. So I decided to put it away for the summer and I will be looking forward to bringing it out again in the fall. And my goal is that when I bring it out again, um, that I will finish it because I do like it. I love working on it, but the colors are a little too bright for my taste, I guess, for, you know, I don't know where I will use it. I can use it in this room just as like my crafting blanket, you know, to keep me warm, but um, my aesthetic is more browns and blacks and creams and um, just more neutrals. So I think that when I do finish it, I will start another one and just be a little bit choosier with the colors and see what happens. So I'm excited to put it away so that when I pull it out again, I'm ready to work on it and finish it. I also made a couple yarn purchases, um, one of which is not here yet. I decided that I want to try my hand at a um, spring summer top. So I'm going to be trying to make a tank top. It's called the Strawberry Top. I think that's what it's called, the Strawberry Top, by um, Hyrus Makes on Instagram. Um, I will put her, that link below for the Strawberry Top. And um, I decided to make it in, I think the colorway is ginseng. And it's from Cascade Yarns. It's a Pima Cotton. Um, yarn. So I'm just waiting for that to come in and then I'm going to try to get started on that so that I have a, a handmade top to wear in the warmer months. I also bought a skein of this vintage tweed yarn because I am obsessed with this color. This like ballerina pink blush. I don't even know what you would call it, but I just think it's so beautiful. And I wanted to make a top, a summer top in this color. And I still might, but I want to try to make this other, the strawberry top first and see how it goes. And then I will try my hand at a second one, probably in this color. Um, I don't know why I chose that ginseng color. It's kind of a green color, which I guess I I don't really have that color in my wardrobe. And so I don't know why I chose it. I think I chose it because it looks good with brown or black and I'll probably wear a black tank top under it. But I don't know why I chose that. I would think that I would choose something a little bit more neutral. I guess it's still earthy. I don't know, we'll see when I work on it how much I like it, but this color is one that I, I don't know, I just gravitate towards. My skin is kind of a pinky tone, um, so I feel like it just brings that out, and I don't know, I'll try it, you know, maybe on the next tank top that I attempt. Another find, uh, we like to thrift, the kids and I, so we were looking through some books and I found a bunch of books for them, but I also found this book for me, and this is Vogue Knitting's Stitchinary. And I have been looking for a stitch dictionary for a while. I know this isn't a comprehensive one. Um, in fact, 
it comes in several volumes and this is the knit and purl volume so these stitches strictly pertain to knits and purls but there are many of them here so it's not like you know it's just a couple of stitches i mean the whole book is <laughs> knits and purls stitches so i feel like there's enough to keep me busy here to learn how to do some things and who knows maybe in the future i'll try to design something Thank you.